Hello, ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Today, we're gonna to share 10 tips for underwater photography for everybody. So it's the weekend, the twins are napping, and I had this idea earlier, sitting like, why don't we, uh, why don't we do a fireside chat, but outside and without any fire, just sort of like this, and go through just some of the tips off the top of my head that I've written about in a number of different tutorials for different publications, and even sprinkled throughout other videos on my channel. So why don't we just sit down and put these all together? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna share these 10 photo tips. I think you'll find them useful. I also you know, brought up my camera just for context so we know we're talking about underwater photography. You know, it's authentic because I've got this, but it's still a casual conversation. As always, questions, drop them in the comments. I answer all questions and I think we're, we're ready. Hey Poseidon, kick that intro. Our first three tips are a bit of a sequence, and it's all about getting in the mentality to find great photo compositions. So the first is to look for interesting subjects and scenes that will be the subject of your photograph. It's so easy when we're diving to get distracted or even get complacent shooting a quick snapshot of our buddy or a fish from above or something like that. But we really want to make sure we're finding interesting subjects, right? You don't want to take your whole family through 6,452 images from your vacation. You want to slow that down, maybe choose 15 of them that you want to show them, right? Because they'll have feedback and be, be interested in those 15 photos from your vacation versus trying to drag them through hours and hours of who knows what you've shot. So it's the same mentality underwater. Be discerning and look for those best scenes underwater. The second tip is to slow down. Oftentimes underwater, especially if we're a newer diver, we get excited or we get task loaded. A lot of the things we learned, like something from the dive briefing, poof, go right out of our head because we, we've got a lot of tasks going on. We're, we're task loaded, especially with the camera. So take a deep breath move real slow and by doing so you're going to create a photo mindset based on on what you want to shoot and that mindset is going to allow you to see those really interesting subjects and see those really interesting scenes that you might not have noticed before so pause slow down and it will make a world of difference finally you might ask how do i slow down when i'm with a group that's speeding along really fast and fitting over the reef good question i think that boils down to finding the right dive buddies and the right dive group which comes into the vacation you're planning. If you're jumping on a large boat with 20 divers whose agenda is to see a lot of the reef, you know, that's awesome, it's fun, there's a lot to see on all the dive sites that we go and we pay good money to travel to. But as a photographer, you wanna move slower, like we said. So you want to find a buddy who might also be a photographer or a partner who understands how slow you move and how slow you want to move. Or even find a dive operator and dive guide or group that caters to photographers. This way you're not being rushed to swim over the reef really fast with no time to think about your composition, make changes to your settings or make changes to your strobe positioning. And the fourth tip is to talk to your dive guide. Think about who knows the reefs best. Some of these folks have thousands and thousands of dives on these reefs that you're going to be diving on these dive sites. Not only do they know all the structures and features and the pops of color for nice wide angle, but they know where all the macro critters live, at least in macro hot spots where they're zeroed into that sort of thing. So take advantage of the guide's knowledge, build some rapport, ask them questions. If they do show you something underwater, thank them underwater and thank them again on the surface. Tell them, hey, I really liked that. Let's look for more of those. And they'll be happy to go out of the way and do that. And of course, at the end of the trip, if your guide is been super helpful, you want to make sure to leave nice gratuity for them. Tip number five feeds into the idea of being ready for your shot. So the thing you want to do is get your camera settings dialed in as soon as you descend and as soon as you get situated in your dive. So you descend, you make sure your buoyancy is trim, you're, you're feeling good underwater, you've checked your SPG again, you've done your dive buddy check underwater and everyone is comfortable, you're in touch with the dive guide and the other members of the group. At that point, check out your camera, turn it on, make sure your settings are where you want them. If you're shooting a manual settings, then expose for the ambient light if you're shooting wide angle. Make sure you get those blues dialed in based on the direction you're shooting and the depth you're at so that it'll be a lot quicker to quickly adjust your strobe position and any subtle tweaks to your camera settings when you do find that subject in composition. You're almost there, so it's just a, a little bit of change once you're at that starting point and you're ready to go, ready to start shooting the photos. 
Along those lines, we'll share tip six, which is to adjust the strobe positioning as well. Oftentimes, if you have an arm and clamp system or a flex arm system, you might have those strobes or those video lights held in close, tight to the camera like this. When you get underwater, especially with arms and clamps, you need to loosen the clamps accordingly. And I'll post a video right here with more details on that or here, which way is left. I, I think it's that way. But you want to loosen these up and get your strobes in position. Same thing, what if a turtle swims by or a manta ray or even a whale shark? You wanna be ready for those shots and you'll be quicker with all your compositions if you know your strobes are really close, they're on, they're at your preferred power setting, unless you're using TTL, of course, automatic power setting, um, and you're ready for that shot. So tip five and six are similar in that you really want to have your camera set up ready for the shot because you will be quick in terms of making those final tweaks for your composition. Tip number seven goes to you and your dive skills. Make sure you have good buoyancy. Now this is something that you need to do on every dive, of course, as you settle into the dive, make sure you're trim, you're feeling good, and your buoyancy is, is on point. But also that's part of your ongoing dive skills, particularly if you haven't dived for a while or if you've changed equipment, make sure your buoyancy is completely dialed in for wide angle, you've got a little more room in the water column maybe, but if you're shooting down lower to the sand or the reef or the substrate, you want to have that buoyancy completely trim because if you're trying to compose a scene and your arms are like this to try and hold you upright in the water, it's not going to work. But if you're completely stable and trim and holding your camera, you now are completely stable and can focus on those subtleties of the composition, which way you're gonna tilt the camera or angle the camera or get in here or adjust a light. So make sure that buoyancy and that trim is dialed in. That's going to help your photography tremendously. Tip number eight, eight. That is that every time you shoot an image, you should be reviewing that image in your camera's LCD screen. Doesn't matter what camera you have. If you are shooting still photos or video and not quite sure what you have or what the settings delivered for you, hit that playback button and review the, the images because you'll see those subtleties of the composition or if your lighting is off or if something else is going on. If you don't do that and you're making a mistake or there's something you could be doing better, you're not going to know that because you're gonna continue repeating that mistake or, or doing that same composition. But if you review the image, you can see what you want to change or adjust. You can make that adjustment, shoot the next frame, and you'll be in a better place. Tip number nine builds on number eight because it's a bigger number, but basically at the end of your dive day, you want to review the images on your tablet, your phone, or your computer, depending on, on what you're shooting and what your workflow is, for the same reason. You want to review everything you shot, your underwater photos and your underwater video, to see if you are getting the footage and the images that you wanted or that you envisioned. Because same thing as before, if you're making a mistake, you want to realize that on the computer screen where you have a nice big image and make those adjustments for the next day so that you can be more productive and bring home the shots you really do want. Finally, tip number 10 builds on eight, nine, and of course all the numbers before that. But this is huge, especially if you're a diver who goes on one or two trips a year and loves to shoot your underwater photos, but then you pack up the camera and you don't touch it until the next trip. If you found that you get to the, the dive destination and you spend the first day or two trying to figure out your camera again, then, oh, hey Luna, here's my dog. If you get to that destination and you realize that you're spending the first day or two trying to figure out what you learned or taught yourself on that last dive trip, that's a waste of dives, a waste of precious dive time. What you want to do is at the end of each dive or each day, you write down the settings that worked for you. And then at the end of the trip, pause, maybe it's on the, the plane or some way on the way home when you have a quiet moment and just compose those thoughts into a few notes or a few bullet points. What settings worked? What were you doing that you felt worked really well? Or what should you not do that was you felt was intuitive before? So just write all these things down that might help you so that on day one of your next dive trip, boom, you start off pretty much right where you left off on the last trip. And that will be a key to continuing to progress and, and get better at your underwater photography. So those are the 10 thoughts. If you have other tips, leave them in the comments below and I will check those out. Maybe we'll make more videos like this. So if you like this format, if you like this casual running through thoughts and tips and ideas and anything else you'd like to learn, let me know and I'll do more videos like this. And as always, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.